What's up YouTube and welcome back. Quick few updates, starting with the video quality. You probably do not care about it, but I do, so there's that. Second, I'm gonna try to slow down a little bit the pace of the tutorials. People brought that up in the comments and I think it's a fair feedback. And please feel free to keep them coming. I think that's how we're going to improve the quality of the content here on this channel. We're going to be touching new areas. First off, I will introduce what is geometry nodes, and we will use that to model a background for our scene. Next, we will sculpt and model an organic abstract piece using metaballs. After that, we will create a photorealistic material using texture. Then we will create a procedural mixed material. Pow, pow, let's go. So let's start with uh, geometry nodes. What I want to do is create a floor with different tiles and those tiles being randomly moved. Let's start by adding a cube. The only thing that I want to add is a bubble. Click on the cube, modifier properties, add a modifier, bubble, adding some segments, maybe 12, reducing the size of the bubble, maybe 0.05, and I'm going to resize the plane four times since okay sounds okay control a and uh, apply the scale i'm going to use that plane to create a geometry node reach the corner to get the arrow let's introduce another window and let's go to geometry node editor i'm going to select the plane and create new what just happened is this plane has now a geometry node modifier one of the most used component in geometry node is going to be instance on points Shift A, S, instance on points. I'm going to throw that in there. I'm going to introduce a grid. The node is called grid. I want the cube to be used as an instance, so I'm going to add a object info. I'm going to select my cube. And I'm going to use the geometry as an instance. Something is happening. My cubes are now instanced on that grid, which is one meter by one meter with three vertices. So I can select those two parameters and increase the size of my grid. I can increase the number of vertices, which is basically going to add more cubes. I can hide that cube for now. Next, I want to move them on the Z axis randomly. I'm going to use a node called set position. And I'm going to use a random value in order to drive the offset. So I'm going to plug the value to the offset. I don't want that to be a float. I want to use a vector. So now I'm going to have my X, Y, Z. I'm going to reset those two to zero. And if I drag that, you will see my cubes are now moving on the Z axis. Next, I want those cubes to be next to each other and just slightly moved on the Z axis, not that much. So I can start with that. Maybe I can point, uh, point 0.1. That's probably fine. And I'm going to work with the scale and the size. Since I want all of those numbers to be the same, I can just add a value node and plug that to the scale. I'm going to increase that to a point where all of those cubes are stitched together. Let's work on the camera angle. Toggle camera view. Going to view, camera to view. If you zoom out too much, you can see there's some clipping happening here. The way to fix that is to increase the end parameter in the view as well as the camera clip end. I don't want the floor. Then I'm going to change the output property here to be a 1080p. And I'm going to tweak my camera again. We're going to move on to the next step and we'll get back to that. I'm not going to go too much into uh, technical details about what metaballs really are. I think the easiest way is to show you. Shift A, metaball, and I'm going to start with a ball. While I'm there, I'm going to reframe my camera a little bit, going out of the camera. Metaballs can be different shapes, 
that will fuse together depending on how far they are from each other. You can tweak how much they fuse, where they fuse, and how precisely they fuse. By default, if you had another metaball or if you copy the metaball, it will add to the previous shape. But like booleans, there's a way to subtract and we will cover that in a minute. For that part of the tutorial, the goal is to create a shape, an abstract shape that you like, that looks cool. Just move things around until you find something that you like. It's a little bit like sculpting, so have fun. I'm gonna quickly cover the concept and then I will speed up the video where I will move things around until I find a shape that I like. We have our first meta ball and I'm gonna duplicate that meta ball using Shift D and I'm gonna move the second meta ball. You can see that there's some kind of attraction between the two objects. The closer they get, the stronger the connection is. You can select any pieces of the meta ball using the circle shape around it. One thing I'm gonna do immediately is increase the resolution. So I'm gonna to go to Object Data Properties. And here there's two parameters. Resolution on the viewport, which is here, and the resolution in the render. I usually like to keep these two things together. So what I see is what I get. And I'm gonna try 0.1. The last concept is that you can add other shapes. Shift A, Meta Ball. You can add a capsule. You can add a plane. You can also add a ellipsoid and you can add a cube. Cubes and planes are interesting if you want to create a base for your object, which I will do. For efficiency purposes, I'm going to speed up the video. Something that Blender can perhaps improve moving forward is the mathematical operation between the metaballs. You can subtract a metaball to the other pack of the metaballs, but it's quite hidden. The way to do that is hit tab to get into the edit mode. And here in the active element, click on negative. Now you can see it start to be subtracted from the other one. So that's a good way to add imprints and indentation to the shape. I'm gonna speed up the video one more time to get the shape that I'm happy with. Since metaball are so organic looking, you can quickly get into a weird territory. I usually try to not go overboard to avoid this like alien shape, but you do you. I want to tweak the floor because I think the tiles are too small and they're not covering the entirety of the frame. Let's head back to geometry node again, select my plane, make sure my camera to view is not enabled so I can zoom out and see a little bit more what's happening in the frame. So I'm gonna increase the scale of the tile. And I don't wanna to see too much of them in the frame, so that's probably okay for now. I'm gonna duplicate the value and plug that to size X and size Y. So I just have one thing to tweak. Maybe that's a bit too big, so let's reduce the scale value again. I'm gonna select the original plane since that's where the geometry nodes are driven from. And I'm just gonna move that on the z-axis. We're gonna use the same technique as in the previous tutorial and I'm just gonna introduce a HDRI. I'm gonna go into my shader editor, select the world environment texture, control T to add the mapping node. And I'm gonna use one of the HDRI we used in the previous tutorial. Everything is blown up, so maybe reduce the strength to 0.5. I want to move the plane because I want the object to sit in the middle of the tile. Let's introduce some colors using textures. 
still in the shader editor and this time I'm going to use the object. In the previous tutorials, we worked with procedural materials. This time we're going to mix things up a little bit and we're going to use texture materials. There is an amazing website called Polyhaven. You can find different kinds of assets, HDRI, textures and 3D models. Everything is really high quality and 100% free. There's a few ways to support the website. The first one is to become a Patreon. And the second one, which is the route I went with, is by buying their plugins. It's a really good add-on and you can access every Polyhaven content directly from Blender. And we're going to look for a texture, more specifically, a concrete texture. Concrete wall 007. I'll put the link in the description. Since that's going to be the only texture in the scene, I don't mind going 8K. Plus, it's going to be a close-up. I'm going to select Blender. You can set up the nodes yourself, but for this tutorial, we're just going to copy that sphere. Control V. So now the sphere is here and it brings with it the material. I'm going to select my cube, click on material properties and select concrete wall 007. I can delete my sphere. I don't need that anymore. Let's click on the cube and add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to click on adaptive subdivision. We can hide the cube again. The texture looks good, but I want to desaturate the color. Shift A, S, and I'm going to add a U saturation value node. Plug that after the base color, and I'm going to reduce the saturation. I think we're good for the texture. I want to go back to the geometry node one more time and move the tiles on the Z axis a little bit more. So geometry nodes, click on the plane. I can play with the value and the seed. Let's create a second material for the metaballs. I just realized that actually the screencast keys add-on is slowing down my zooming in and out in the node view, so I'm gonna disable it for now. Hopefully I'll find a fix for the next tutorial. I like having little dots, it makes the material more cool, so we're gonna start with that. Shift A, we're gonna use a Voronoi texture, Control T, Shift A S, and we're gonna have a color ramp distance to the factor and we can control shift left click. I'm going to plug the object to the vector, switch from linear to constant. And I'm going to move my slider. I'm going to plug a value node to the scale. Set that to two. For my first material, I want the dots this time to be white and very reflective and actually why not metallic i'm going to introduce a mix shader so that's going to be the first shader i'm going to duplicate that do something totally different for now and we're going to mix with our color factor good working as intended Let's focus on the second material now. Control shift click. We're going to simply use a noise texture to drive the color around the shape. You remember the noise texture, so shift A, S, noise. Control T. Let's preview the noise texture. Let's increase the scale a little bit. Let's plug a color ramp. And let's add another color ramp. The first color ramp is going to drive which colors goes where and how much. The second color ramp will actually drive the color. Let's pick two colors. This way I have a lot of control on how much color are displayed. So if I move that cursor around I can introduce more or less of the pink and more or less of the blues. Let's reduce the specularity a little bit as well as the roughness. And let's introduce some subsurface scattering maybe just to point 0.1. I'm going to add a last node, U saturation, that I will duplicate. The first one will drive the color and the second one, the subsurface color. Subsurface colors needs to be gentle, so I'm going to turn the saturation to point 0.1 to start with. And I'm going to preview this material by clicking Control Shift left click. That's looking pretty cool. I would like that material to have a little bit more of complex colors. So I'm going to use an image to pick some colors out of it and generate a gradient. Let's start by moving everything together, selecting all of the metaballs. M on your keyboard, name your folder, 
for the gradient, you can find inspiration online. Simply Google a colorful gradient image, or you can use the same technique as we used in the previous tutorial using a different color palette. I'm going to share something that I learned recently, and it's quite the game changer. Quick shout out to uh, Mohamed who shared his technique with me. Go check his Instagram. He's putting out some really cool stuff out there. He also have a really nice YouTube channel. I'll put the links below. This technique will allow you to pick multiple colors at once instead of going back and forth with the color ramp and the eyedropper. Let's remove that handle. I'm going to hover that area. Alt E. Now the eyedropper is going to be activated and I can click on this image as many colors as I want. It's going to save you a lot of time. Time to step back and take a look at the image. I really like the background, the way the tiles are shifted on the Z axis. That's really cool. The texture looks really nice. I think I went a little bit overboard with the bevel, so I'm going to reduce the size of the bevel. There is clearly some repetition in the texture here. I don't think there's so much I can do for that. So I will try, but if I can't, I think I will be fine with that. The final texture here, I think all of the parameters and the glossiness are really good. I just need to work on the gradient to make it more pretty. And as we went through, I can just tweak the, this color ramp and this color ramp to get more or less of the gradient. The last thing on my list is the camera. I want to introduce some depth of field. Since we haven't covered that in the previous tutorial, let's take a look. I'm going to click on the camera and here, object data properties. I'm going to click on the depth of field. I want to focus on this object. That's where some knowledge about photography is really interesting. But what will drive how much depth of field I get is the f-stop. So I'm going to tweak that a little bit. 0.2 looks pretty good to me. I forgot about one thing, which is the resolution of the metaballs itself. I can tell here this is not really great, so I'm going to increase the resolution too. We can do that together. Go to metaballs and here tweak to maybe 0.04. If we look at the wireframes for a second, you can tell there's a lot of polygons. Well, technically polygons, triangles and n-gons. Just remember that the scene is quite heavy for the computer. Let's try 0.3. That's probably as far as I will go for now. Time to speed up the video and tweak all of the things I mentioned. I found a way to solve the texture repetition using geometry nodes. We will just rotate the cube by increments of 90 degrees. In order to do that, we will use a random value that we will set to integer. We will use a math node that we will set to multiply. And we will use a combine x, y, z. In the maximum value of the random value, we're going to input 3. In the second input, we're going to input 1.571. You can ask me why, but my answer will be, trust me, bro, it's math, it just works. Then I'm going to plug the vector to the rotation. You can see the tiles are rotated 90 degrees. I will play with the seed until I don't see the same patterns in the image. That looks great. Looking at my final image, I can see there are some issues here because the resolution is not low enough. So I went back to Blender and changed the resolution. Thank you for following along and I hope you learned a thing or two. Feel free to share anything with me in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it really does help. See you in the next one.